Welcome to Blue Collar Catholic. Tonight we have our surprise guest from a Blaze Worship Ministry, Father Mike Voithofer. Trying to say yeah. it. <laughs> Father, That's right. But I hope I did you justice. You got it. Praise God. So like I said, you know, uh, a lot of us Christians are feeling wore down, a lot going mm -hmm. on in life, and uh, I wanted mm -hmm. to, a positive voice, and uh, Father Mike is mm -hmm. the most on-fire priest I've ever seen, <laughs> and it's a pleasure of me meeting yeah. him. In fact, uh, I got home from work, you know, I worked a regular day, I had enough time to take a shower, put a pot of coffee on, and then... Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going to like look at some of your videos and uh, sure. try to get prepared what to ask and talk about. And I clicked on and you were praising the Lord uh, I guess <laughs> the other night in the, in the parking lot of a church. Uh, and I just started praising the Lord. Next thing you know, I'm praying in tongues, got my hands, <laughs> tears in my eyes, getting convicted. And I was like, Amen. this is what I need. This is what I need. Praise Jesus. Praise, praise God. Jesus. And I want to tell you guys, you're in for a treat. Uh, Father Mike has a gift of encouragement, I think, a uh, gift mm. of evangelization, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, just mm. relax and let, let him refresh your spirit with the words uh, he, uh, he speaks to us. So, um, Father Mike, could you just tell us a little bit about your ministry? Sure, sure. So, I'm, uh, right now I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm a, I'm a priest here of the Archdiocese of Omaha. And uh, I started this ministry called Ablaze Worship. Um, we also have a uh, a blaze house of prayer, um, which is more the the actual on site location where we have here. I'm 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 actually here now at a blaze house of prayer, okay. uh, and we we basically we we encourage people to come back to the well, if you will, right? Come back to the Eucharist, because you know I think so much. We're, there's a lot of we shared a little earlier, right? There's a lot of us in trying to solve all the problems we see in the world and in our marriages, in our families, in our, in our own hearts, in our own lives. Um, and, and I, I began this ministry about, uh, it's been, let's see, almost uh, nine, eight, nine years ago now. And so basically it's real simple. We put Jesus on the altar and get out of the way. Amen. And we let the Lord do what the Lord's going to do, which is heal and deliver and set free like freedom ignatius says that right saint ignatius says that the the ultimate gift or if you will fruit of the spiritual the interior life is freedom in christ amen and so he came to set us free right amen. that's what scripture says the lord came to set us free the truth sets us free but the truth as you as you as you know is it's not just uh something we hear with our human ears the truth is needs to be experienced um we taste and see the goodness of the lord and adoration the ministry i began called ablaze worship ablaze ministry um basically we 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 invite people wherever we go whether it be a parking lot a church uh we, we invite catholics non-catholics all are welcome and we just put jesus on the altar and and i play a guitar and i have a, a worship team um it's not a con i tell people it's not a concert it's a prayer meeting Amen. You know, and, and we, we have the Lord on the altar and we use music to help people surrender to the power of the Eucharist. And I just wow. I can't stress it enough. You know, my whole vocation as a priest was born out of adoration of the Eucharistic Jesus. And I I just encourage everyone watching, please take time in your week to stop in an adoration chapel to worship our Lord to adore and glorify him. And, right. and, you know, if you want to, there's so many uh, opportunities to just praise and worship God. And I always say praise is a weapon, right? Worship is a weapon. Um, and, and worship is not how much of God we get. It's how much God gets of us. Amen. And I like to, I like to encourage people to think about that is worship's not how much of God we get, right? Because let's be honest, God's giving himself 100%, hundred percent of the time. Amen. We, don't always give ourselves back to God. And that's where I think that's where um, we, you, you mentioned the whole idea of, you know, people are tired. Yes. And, and why we're tired is because we're not giving ourselves back to God. Amen. And, I, and I always say burnout is not doing too much. Burnout is when we lose that intimate relationship, that communion with God, that connection with God. Because Look at Mother Teresa. Look at our saints in our church. You know, right behind me, John Paul II. Look at these, these saints who, they work tirelessly for the glory of God. And they didn't burn out. They didn't get tired. You know, 
And, and I've learned in my life that if I worship the Lord with all my mind, soul, strength, and spirit, just worship God, give him praise, focus. We need to focus on Christ in the Eucharist. And as we do, we taste the supernatural, right? Amen. Amen. We experience the supernatural. And I'm just, I see, I just see it. I see it. You see it. Um, we see it in the church where there's this, this, if you will, just human laboring. Um, God wants to uh, help us to participate in the supernatural. You know, scripture says he came that we might be partakers of the divine nature, you know, that we might taste the power of God. And I think, you know, my experience is, is a lot of people, you know, we often want to do it our way right? We, we want to, we want to fix problems our way. We want to heal the church our way. We want to uh, do healing in our marriages our way. But my experience, you know, with marriage, family challenges at work, you, you, you turn to the Lord, you face heaven, you, you give God glory. And what happens is again, is as our human spirit in the gift of faith, right? As faith is exercised in me, I start it's like, if this is God and this is me, I start touching God through faith. And when we touch God, it's like putting your finger in the socket, if you will. You get electrified. You get, you get shook up, if you will, by the Lord. He's like, he, he, he shakes you up. He, he, he zaps you in a good way. Like, he brings you back to life. Like, it's kind of like resuscitation, you know, when, 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 we're, when we're dead, we can be brought back to life. And this is the Holy Spirit. That's one of the greatest... Um, uh, uh, the, the sayings I use for our ministry, a blaze ministry is building the culture of Pentecost. Right. Man. Um, like I have my hat here. You told me I should wear this hat. Baby. <laughs> right. So awesome. I mean, awesome. we want to, what we want to build the culture of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. And, and this is, this is what the acts of the apostles was. And this is what we're all called to priests. And we got to pray for our priests, our bishops, our Pope. We got to pray for our church. We got to pray for husbands and wives and our kids and, we got to pray. And as I worship the Lord, grace comes into me and out to those different parts of the body of Christ. And, and again, that's to me, the power of worship is it. Remember worship is warfare. It's a weapon. So as I'm praising God, like I might not feel like praising God. And I think this is a, a challenge in our culture, right? Is we teach everyone to follow whatever you feel like doing. Well, I don't always feel like doing adoration or feel like praying my rosary or feel like reading scripture or for that matter, I don't always feel like uh, sitting in front of the Lord or, or even playing my guitar and worshiping, but I invite people make an act of faith Amen. so grace can move. Grace can't flow if we aren't going to touch God. We got to touch him. And how do we touch God? Through faith. Um, one of the things we do that I've seen tremendous healings happen physically, emotionally, spiritually, marriage is healed in a blaze. We have Jesus on the altar in the Eucharist. We're, we're leading people in prayer. And I, I kind of coach people through the encounter, through adoration with the ministry of a blaze. I, I kind of coach them along and help them to kind of forgive, right? Many you probably have heard of the unbound ministry, right? Where you know, we forgive, we renounce spirits, we renounce lies we might be believing. We forgive family, we forgive our husbands, our wives, our kids, uh, coaches, teachers, uh, uh, employers, employees. Forgiving, unforgiveness is, I found the greatest blockage to so many people um, for a greater outpouring of the new wine, the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and, and I just find that as you lead people through forgiveness, like, you know, in the name of Jesus, I forgive myself. Um, Lord, I release myself to your mercy because, because I can't, you can Lord. Um, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my, my wife, my, my kids and Lord, I release them to you. Um, but I'll often coach people into this experience at a blaze. Um, you know, people can dial in on, on my YouTube channel. If they want to kind of taste and see what we offer and what the Lord is providing the church and the people. So we put the Lord out. I um, mean, we have this cloth, this cloth that flows off the altar. And I'll mention this, I'll put kneelers around the altar. So people come up and they touch the hem of the garment, right? You know, that scripture, right? Where uh, the woman with the hemorrhage, right? right? It says she, it says she spent all she had. She went to all these doctors. She went to all these people and, and no one could help her. She spent everything. On the natural, 
And then what? She heard about this guy who was walking through town. His name's Jesus. And she fought through the crowd and she touched his garment, just his garment, right? Like she touched the hem of his garment. And when people at a blaze come forward, they touch the hem of Jesus's garment. Wow. And I always say, you know, I always like to say is what's different. What is different about the woman touching Jesus and all the other people that were pressing in on him? Because the apostles, if you remember that scripture, the apostles were like, Lord, what are you talking about? Everyone's touching you. You know, like, what do you mean? There's a crowd pressing in or trying to fight through this crowd. Everybody's touching you, Jesus. What are you talking about? Power left you. Who touched you? And, and in a sense, they didn't get it. But Jesus said, power came out of me. Because when the woman touched Jesus with faith, that's the key word, touched him with faith, it released his supernatural power into her body and she got healed. I find at these events, um, these prayer group events that we offer with the blaze regularly, people are coached into exercising the gift of faith they got at baptism and using the gift of faith to touch the hem of Jesus's garment. And when they touch his garment, I mean, we've seen physical healings. We've seen, I, I've had, I can, I can name off a bunch of healings that people you came. A couple, I'd be interested. I think my guests, my uh, viewers would be interested. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, one healing uh, recently is um, somebody had a, a tumor in their brain. Okay. And they came to an ablaze and sometimes I'll process around the, the, the church with the Eucharist. Right. And this was actually at, a, at a, a Catholic high school in town. We just invited whoever wanted to come. And I was processing around in this high school um, in their chapel. And uh, the mother was a mother there with her daughter. And uh, she had this uh, tumor right here in, in her head. And I went up to her with the Eucharist and I just placed the Eucharist real close to her head. And I mean, I didn't know she had a tumor, right? I just was walking with Jesus. He knows, right? So I put the monstrance by her head and I just prayed and, um, and I was praying for healing specifically because I was walking around with Jesus in the Eucharist with the monstrance and she went back to her doctor. And again, her tumor's gone. I mean, Praise it's just Lord. gone. I mean, and again, how does that happen? Well, that's like saying, well, you know, how's the sun made, you know, God made it, God did it, God heals Amen. and he wants to heal. And again, this culture of Pentecost, exercising that muscle of faith so the spirit of god can come into our bodies and heal them mm -hmm. and another person i saw um uh just recently had had an eye problem uh their eyes like there was one of their eyes something was wrong with the you know it was a detached retina or something like that um their retina or something with their eye um where again i just put the lord right by their eye and prayed and uh their eye was healed i mean god healed their eye Awesome. Another person uh, did a real, this was actually uh, just praying after mass. I've been, I've been, I've been challenging myself to, to lay hands on people more and pray for miracles. I've been I, like, Lord, I want, I want to see miracles. I believe right. and I trust in you. So after mass, somebody's like, Hey, I have this heart issue. Like my heart's not, it, what do they call it? It's like out of rhythm, right? It's not yeah, yeah. Rhythm or something like rhythmia. That. Yeah. I think that's what And they're, they're like, they, they were like, well, I went to all these doctors. We went to Mayo clinic. We, they can't figure it out. And I'm like, well, God's here. Let's pray. So I put my hand on their head and I said, in the name of Jesus, heart, go back into rhythm. They went back to Mayo Clinic. Their heart's normal now. Oh, wow, praise the Lord. And that's all I did. And it's not, again, it, this isn't me, right? This isn't us. It's the power of God when we make an act of faith and we do it regularly. We're going to see more right. and if manifest, you, yeah, manifestations. And if you look in the book of Acts, this is, this was normal. This was the way church exactly. Was. And people, exactly. people are surprised when they hear priests like you. But if you if you read uh, St. Augustine, his church, yeah. you read about healing. You read about uh, they mm. spoke in tongues. They called it jubilation, I think, back then. Exactly. That's the words they use. So they, you know, the Catholic church is the biggest. Mm. I tell people the Catholic church yeah. is the biggest charismatic church there is. Exactly. <laughs> the original Pentecostals. Amen. Amen. And it's the... It's like, it's like, we always say like, it's like a sleeping giant. Like the more we wake up, the more the world will be transformed because how can you, it, I, I always explain like this, come to an ablaze event that we offer, watch it online, or for that matter, just go to your own local adoration chapel and just be vulnerable to God. Like, Lord, here I am. 
Jesus, I invite you into my memory right now. I'll just, I, I just saying that out loud right now, you know, people just like say, Jesus, I invite you into my memory. He's doing it right now. He's coming into my memory, right? Because I, as I said that, I've just opened the door for him to enter, right? Jesus, come into my, uh, my body, my cells, come into all my organs. Lord, I just invite you into every organ right now. I invite you into my marriage right now. I invite you into my children. And see, when we give these uh, acts of faith, the graces start to flow, you know? Um, I had a, a, um, uh, somebody uh, just recently texted me. I'm going to read this because it was powerful, but yeah. I had a, an ablaze event in a, in a city nearby here not too long ago. Um, and I want to read how the Lord um, just healed their marriage. I mean, this is cool. It's really cool what, what the Lord has done for this person and, and not just for this person, but others as well. But let's um, what this person says here. Um, that a blaze tonight was just what the doctor ordered. Satan was attacking our marriage so terribly. We got out into the parking lot to come into the ablaze, and we came so close to not even going that night. Then it said, thank God we did, as there was an amazing healing that took place in our marriage. My wife and I wept most of the night. Then listen to this. I have two sisters who haven't spoken in years. They both happened to be there tonight, and they were hugging and crying that night. Thank you for all that the Lord is doing. Look at that. Like God, two sisters that weren't talking for years came to one night with Jesus. Think, think of how that ripples out into other members of the family tree and other members of the family. Even our own life, how we into this miracle, this healing that the God wants to do in our life. So, so I just... I want to encourage people to the Lord, uh, be afraid uh, to worship and adore him and praise him and ask for gifts. Holy Spirit, greater manifestation of this empower the spirit in our lives, you know? So it's just a, it's a great, it's a great opportunity uh, to really just enter in to action and praise and worship of God. Um, as he heals us, as he heals, like that two sisters weren't talking. Now they're talking, you know, married couple came in and, and now they're, uh, and now they're uh, restored in their marriage, you know? That's awesome. We just had a little technical difficulty. You froze a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah. Did you hear me though? Am I coming in clear for you? Yeah, you're good now. Okay. You're starting to come in. So you just froze. We could hear you, but you, you're uh, the okay. reason. So if anybody's watching, just Let's close your eyes and listen to the words. There were some powerful there you go. testimonies there. there. That was that's awesome. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. It's like so you said, powerful. the ripple effect of that, what that's gonna mm. be for that whole family. Exactly. That they belong to. That's mm. that's amazing. Yeah. And and again, it's all simple, right? Go to adoration, sit before Jesus, worship him. Like again, I don't think people realize, but we gotta exercise our faith. We it's not, it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Amen. You know, no, you're right. And I think a lot of people forget to exercise faith. How do you do that right now? Jesus, thank you. Jesus, praise you. Jesus, glory. To you. Like I'm exercising my faith right now. Lord, I glorify. You. And as I do that, I'm giving him permission to flow into me and through me. Amen. Um, and and again, I, I you know how I, I invite people to adoration. I invite them to a blaze. And when we first start the ablaze night, there's a period where I have to kind of get the world off of me. We got to dust off the world Amen. because the world, the flesh and the devil pull us down. Scripture says, lift your minds to things above, raise your mind to heaven. That's giving the gift of faith permission to operate in me. Remember faith's a gift. I have to let it operate in me so that I can touch God. Like the woman that touched his garment, I can touch the Lord and he can touch me. Amen. And so I want to, um, often what I'll do at a blaze too, is I'll invite people to, uh, intercede and pray. And what I want to teach this briefly to everybody watching, because I think this is really important. Like next time you got a headache, don't run first for Advil or aspirin. When you got a headache, say, Jesus, I pray for all the hard headed people in the world, <laughs> you know? So I just, I didn't expect that. <laughs> 
I just turn my headache into a prayer. You see, I, I pray with my body. So you pray with your body. You know, it's Catholics. We, we stand, we sit, we kneel. We, we pray with our bodies. We, we anoint the body. We w- put water on the body. We, we eat the body and blood of the Lord. So think about this. Let's say somebody has lung issues, breathing issues. Lord, I, I offer my lung pain and difficulties up for all those who don't breathe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Let's say your back hurts. You have back problems. Lord, I offer my back problems up for all those who don't or are out of line with the truth. Amen. So the, the alignment of the back is so important, right? How about you have, if, if you have head trauma? Well, again, Lord, for all those who don't have the mind of Christ, I just pray for them to have the mind of Christ. I offer my sufferings up with you, Jesus, in you, Jesus, through you, Jesus. You have an earache. For all those who don't hear God's voice, Lord, I, I give you my ear pain, my, my struggles hearing. I give it to you. Um, my throat. For those who don't speak the truth, Lord, I offer my sore throat up, my, my horse cough or whatever you got, Lord, I offer it up. You see how you can turn your whole body into prayer? Awesome. Amen. How about like, because what we're talking about right now is like a blaze, offer a sacrifice of praise to God. How do we do that? Praise is sacrificial. How? Unite your sufferings to Christ. You know, how about you break an arm or you have a, a, a tennis elbow or tendonitis? Lord, I pray for those who don't serve you, with those who don't give. Um, your feet hurt, those who don't walk in the truth, your stomach, those who don't digest the word. I can go on and on. You know, the kidneys, cl- the kidneys clean the blood, right? For yeah. what offer my kidney pain and problems up for all those who aren't being cleansed by your blood that, that won't allow you to cleanse them of their sin. Um, but like, it's so powerful because what I'm doing right now is these aren't my hands anymore. These are Jesus's hands, yeah. not only through baptism, but through my priesthood. These are Jesus's hands. When I bless with these hands, something happens. Amen. And I want to encourage everyone watching. Let's be a people of blessing, people that curse. We want to bless. Amen. We want to bless our brothers and sisters. In uh, so, so everyone watching, be like, be a people of blessing. Amen. You know, let your hands bless. Amen. Uh, let your heart bless. Let your voice bless. You know, if you're driving and you see somebody... Just say, Jesus, right now I bless that person in your name. Um, bless your bless your spouse. Bless your people you work with. Uh, bless those you just see in random stranger. Bless them. Like, Lord, I bless this person. Let healing start to happen in them. Um, so it is exciting, you know, because when you start walking and living in that supernatural, you really start to get excited. Why? Because you see the supernatural manifestations of God beginning to happen. Absolutely. And that's why I do what I do with the Blaze Ministry, uh, uh, so people can taste and experience it. I can't picture you doing anything else. What did you do before you were a priest? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I was an architectural engineer. Um, I was an engineer uh, before. Actually, I went to Penn State. Penn State is where I graduated as an architectural engineer. But that was where I encountered the Lord through a prayer group in my college experience that was very spirit filled uh, it was at the new catholic newman center on campus uh, a very they did sort of what i'm doing with a blaze we put jesus out we prayed with each other we encouraged each other to make good holy confessions we had strengthened our each other through prayer fellowship um holy mass regularly I, that's where i started going to mass in college more every day because i saw all these students excited about jesus i'm like why ain't i excited about jesus wow you know and I wanted what they had. I think Matthew Kelly says nothing's more attractive than holiness, right? Man, that's and awesome. that's why we have the saints. So when I saw the students on fire, I always like to say I didn't. The faith's not so much taught as it is is caught, right? Man. You catch the fire. You catch it. How do you catch fire? You got to be close to the flame. Amen. And and I tell people, where's the flame? The, the Eucharist is the Amen. the like a hot hot flame the closer you get to the eucharist the more your soul will catch on fire and you don't have to do a whole lot you just be there and look at jesus let him look at you praise and adore him as he as you do that he'll you'll catch fire that's what happened to me i just spent time with him and i started to notice oh i have more joy how'd that happen well i'm spending time with himself who is joy god I got more patience. How'd that happen? Well, I'm spending time with Jesus. I'm actually 
more peaceful. What what happened? I didn't do anything exactly. Who did it? God did it. Principal. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting, you know. Um, I do the a blaze. I do worship at the homeless shelter once a month. We go down there and do praise, and and I'm always amazed of how these homeless people just enter into worship. Wow. Um, because see, they don't they don't have all the distractions that we have necessary. They have distractions with their poverty and their pain, but we have so many things at our fingertips that rob us yeah, of computer. life in the Holy spirit. Yeah. Right. Really. So, I mean, we got to detach from the yeah. things of this passing world. That's why fasting is important prayer and fasting. And I encourage people to even pray like, Lord, give me the gift of fasting. You know, once or twice a week, just, don't eat as much, you know, don't turn on the radio when you're driving to work, spend time in silence, put on some praise music. Like I do. Worship God. Um, but, but I noticed the poverty in the home leads them quicker to praise. Um, whereas I think we have a lot more in our backpacks, if you will, that weigh on us when we have the material things of this world. And we, we, we have a heart time entering into prayer because we have too many distractions in our lives um and we need to uh choose prayer not oh i don't feel like it well you're not gonna like a lot of things you need to choose it right um choose it uh and, and you know one thing i always say to people is it's not it doesn't work like some people are like well once i get my life together i'll get close to god i'm like that'll never happen Amen. You get close to God and God will put your life together. Amen. We never try to get close to God so we can get our life together. We get close to God and God will put our life together. He'll do it. Not, it's not us. It's him. Um, he in us, he through us. Uh, so yeah, it's exciting. You know, it's the culture of Pentecost and um, it's an exciting thing that God is doing and has done in people that, that come. I just love watching what the Lord's going to do when we do an event. Every single ablaze event that we do is so different because I see the Holy Spirit manifest in so many different ways. You know, prophetic knowledge, you know, uh, people getting healing physically, relationships, emotional, spiritual healings. Uh, we had a lady actually um, come to a blaze that she actually said she was going to kill herself. And wow. um, she came, she came to an ablaze and she's still around today because of that. Wow. Um, and again, it's not, it's not me. It's, it's Jesus. Yeah. Um, we need to invite people to come and meet the Lord in the Eucharist. And I, I, you know, we have, we have, we have numerous Protestants coming to a blaze, like a handful, a good handful of non-Catholics that are coming to a blaze um, that are, uh, just fascinated with the spirit of God and they might not recognize it at the moment, but what's unique about a blaze is uh, it's the Eucharist. It's the real presence of Jesus there uh, with us in the Eucharist. Amen. So it's, uh, Amen. it's exciting. It's, it's bridging, you know, it's bridging people from where they are to the Eucharist. Amen. Um, we're, we're built, we're bridging people to the Eucharist. That's my whole mission. Is to bring people to the Holy Eucharist. And as a, as a priest, you know, I love the I love being a priest. I tell people I love the Eucharistic Jesus. That's my whole life. I would not be here talking to you, or I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for the Holy Eucharist. And Mike, I've not, it would be like if I if you never tasted chocolate and I gave you a piece of chocolate, you wouldn't if somebody tomorrow told you chocolate don't exist, you'd be like, Well, well I tasted it yesterday. I know. <laughs> Amen. So in my own life, nobody's going to tell me that that's not the real presence because I've tasted it to the point of, I know that I know that I know, and I'm so confident that I'm going to invite others to come. And I know that I know that I know Jesus will touch them if they just give him permission. They're going back to touching the garment. Just, Amen. just, just sit with the Lord. Amen. Um, be I, encouraged. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When I was an evangelical, so I was baptized Catholic, mm. and then, you know, I just went my own way. And then, yeah, yeah, you know, born again Christian in Navy boot camp. And I had friends telling me, oh, the Catholic Church is the Antichrist. I became really anti Catholic <laughs> yeah. until I met 
a charismatic Catholic who was more on fire than me. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I want what this guy's got. And um, yeah. I remember asking him, uh, what church you go to? He said, St. Matthew's. I said, that's <laughs> funny. It sounds like you said St. Matthew's. Yeah, like, yeah. St. Matthew's. I didn't know he was a Catholic. I just thought he was a yeah. Pentecostal. And he said, I did say St. Matthew's. I said, well, that's mm. funny. It sounds like a Catholic church. And he yeah. said, it is a Catholic church. I'm like, why would you go to a Catholic church? He's like, I'm Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, wow. uh, and then I went back to my pastor who laid hands on me and I received the, the gift of speaking in tongues from this pastor. Yeah. I said, pastor, you know, I was with these Catholics that prayed in mm. tongues. They prayed for healing. <laughs> they knew the Bible better than I knew the Bible. Yeah, I, said, yeah. I, I thought Catholics weren't saved. And he mm. said, let me tell you a story. He was a captain in the Navy. He was a Navy chaplain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. His uh, superior, when he was, I guess, a lieutenant, the chaplain was a Catholic priest. And he wow. said, he was the man who laid hands on me, and I received the gift of tongues mm. from him. He said, "Wow." He said, Catholics are our brothers. And that was the first time I heard a Protestant say Catholics are our brothers. And I didn't think about it at the time, but I thought about mm. it now that from a Catholic priest yeah. to a Protestant pastor to me, and then I end up back in the Catholic church. Wow. That That's all? amazing. So Praise was, God. But I have a lot of Christians. I, mean, yeah, I was going to say, I know a lot of Christians, both in the Catholic church and in the Protestant mm -hmm. church, they're <laughs> kind of like afraid of the Holy Spirit. When I show them yeah. you know, these gifts, you know, you know, and you have some people that abuse them and, and make a mockery. Yeah. Out. I said, but sure. they're genuine, you know, look at the, the saints, oh. the apostles, they used them. And it, and Paul commands yeah. us earnestly desire mm -hmm. the spiritual gifts and do exactly. not, do not forbid speaking in tongues. And you can show yeah. them that and they still don't get it. They're like, no, yeah. no, that's, you know, that's yeah. unorderly. That's, that's irreverent. Yeah. What do you tell them? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like um, in my own life, like I remember when I saw these college students, like, this is when I was in college, right? Studying. Okay. And that's where I had my conversion. I was always Catholic, but I, I kind of came to life, you know, through that. It's like, again, I put my finger in the holy socket of God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> like, he, I, I came to life, like, you know, like, I think, I think like you're electrified, <laughs> like dry, dry bones, right? The dry bones Man. come back to life. When, when the Lord speaks in you, you're going to come to life in the spirit. So, and that's what the blaze is really at the heart of a blaze is life in the Holy spirit, right? Like you're about life in the Holy spirit is all that, that we're talking about right now, life in the spirit. So I remember in college, I went through the life in the spirit seminar, you know, some people that maybe don't know about that. It's like a seminar you go through. They introduce you to the basic message of Jesus. Um, there's a very Catholic version of that as well. And I remember that the point where we went, we got to a point where we, um, you know, you were encouraged to make a good examination and confession, right? And I remember I did that. I went home. I made a really good examination of my life and confessed my sin, went to confession. And then I remember the next week we got prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? And as I was sitting there with all these students that went through this life in the spirit seminar i remember um i was just had my eyes closed they were singing they, you know they were praising and worshiping and um and i remember uh the the priest and the team were coming around praying over everyone for this release of the holy spirit because through baptism we have the spirit through confirmation we have the spirit but like conta la mesa who's the papal preacher says we have to let him out of the cage amen you know amen. we got to let the holy spirit go and i think you mentioned this but a lot of people are afraid of the holy yeah. spirit because yeah. when when you let the holy spirit take hold of you you're not in control anymore amen um i'm not in control anymore like the lord might probably like, hey go speak to this person like oh well, i don't know if i see charismatic just means radically available to god amen. you know char charismatic means radically hospitable to god so open, however you want to love through me, however you want to serve through me. But I remember I was there, the, the prayer team was coming around, they were praying. When they got about, I'd say about 10 feet away, I started feeling like something come over my body, like it was different. And then as they got closer, it got stronger and stronger. And I was like, wow, what is this? I, it was very it welcoming. It was peaceful. It was, you know, I started to realize it, it's God's power. Um, and as they put hands on me the priests and the team prayed over me literally my lips began to tingle and i my tongue and i just like you know I'm praying in tongues just like the spirit was just like speaking through me and it was coming from in me like just bubbling out of me and it was like i 
part of me was like, wow, what's happening? But I wanted it to happen. I didn't, it was different, but it wasn't, wasn't obtrusive. Scary. It wasn't obtrusive. It was like, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to let the Lord, it. whatever yeah, he's like doing. I got to release it. it. If I don't release it, it won't happen. Yeah. 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 Gotta, and then I just, you, you know, it. um, it, it just started coming out. Like, it's like, you know, like, you know, when you hear someone praying in the spirit, it sounds like, you know, just baby talk sort of like just, and I always say to people, when you're so overflowing, words aren't good enough. Amen. You know, praying and praying in the spirit, praying in tongues is like, it's the spirit's language. Yet God knows what my spirit's praying. And when I, you know, I do a lot of silent retreats or I direct a lot of people on silent retreat at this, uh, where we're at, where I'm at now, it's called the Ablaze House of Prayer. In Omaha, I do a lot of silent retreats. And as I pray over people for, uh, I, the Lord will give me like prophetic words and, and knowledge and understanding. And I find their retreat goes so much deeper, so much quicker because it's not Father Michael leading it. It's the Holy Spirit leading it. Right. And as I pray with them and release a word, they're like, wow, that unlocks something in their heart. Like the Lord unlocks doors and they go deeper in communion with the Lord. And they have a deeper experience of his love for them. Amen. And they're transformed more powerfully in the Lord. Amen. But those are all, like you said, strive for the gifts. Ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like, Lord, I want, I want all the gifts. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more Amen. of you. Amen. And, and as Catholics, and, and it, we're so blessed. We, could, we have it all. It's like, I heard one guy say, how much do you want? Of, how much Jesus do you want? We have the Eucharist. <laughs> We have the saint. We have our blessed mother. We got the spiritual gifts. This is truly the full gospel of fullness mm, of faith. I mean, we it is. We have it all as a Catholic church. We have a mansion with many rooms. Where I was a Protestant, I had one room. It mm. had the Bible. And if I was, yeah. you know, when I became charismatic, I had another room with the gifts mm. of the Spirit. Now I have a mansion of gifts. Yeah. And God's like, come. You know. Wow. These, these That's gifts, amazing. Gifts, right. The Catholic exactly. Church. Exactly. All come. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, yeah, if you have a whole table of food and you only yeah. eat one thing every time, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, I eat, I only eat hamburgers, you know, but there's all kind of other food there. Yeah. Like the Lord, the Lord my wife would get if she cooked a big feast and I just ate one thing, <laughs> you know, God's given us all these gifts. I'm like, no, God, I don't want that gift. I only want this gift right here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. And that's to me, again, that's where evangelization happens, right? Is when you invite people to the, to the table of plenty, like come. Yeah eat 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 and drink the lord says it in scripture eat freely drink freely it's like you know he, he's given us all of these wonderful gifts in our church and we just have to trust and open ourselves to them um and you know i, I encourage people again like you know where do you start maybe like you start with like visiting the lord in the chapel you know many saints they're like john paul ii you know prayed in tongues he prayed in the spirit you know right. you know uh received very he's very prophetic obviously right he's very prophetic. He's actually our patron here um, of our uh, ministry here. I have a cool story. I just celebrated my uh, 11th anniversary as a priest. And um, congratulations. Yeah. And, and again, I tell people, I love being a priest and I live off prayer. Yeah. You know, I, I want, I want I, my oxygen is prayer and praise and wow. just loving the Lord. But somebody, a, a friend of mine here that works with us here at the Ablaze House of Prayer, uh, she wanted to get me a first class relic of, you know, John Paul II um, for my anniversary. And it obviously it's not easy to get that. We even called our diocese. And but we we were led to somebody in California who had the paperwork who gave up this relic. And it's really beautiful because it's actually the blood, you know, when John Paul was shot. Yeah. It's some of the blood from where he was wow. shot. And I was so excited because. John Paul II is our patron of our ministry, of Blaze House of Prayer. And if anyone loved the Eucharist, John Paul, he invited young people all the time, young and old, come to adoration. Adoration grew through uh, his, his papacy. And I really, as a priest, feel like it's, I always pray like, Lord, use me to bring people back to the Holy Eucharist, wherever they're at. Um, come to uh, the table of plenty. Come to the Lord. Um, come and taste the adoration of the blessed sacrament. So I would say the people that are like thinking, where do I start? What do I do? Well, start inviting and, and go in front of Jesus and the Eucharist and say, Jesus, I want to be baptized by your power and your spirit. You know what I mean by baptism of the spirit is to fully release your baptism in your life. Like 
so many of us are baptized, but we don't let baptism happen to us. Right. Peter Chris you know? gives a, a really good analogy. He gives an analogy of a glass of milk and mm. uh, you pour chocolate syrup oh, yeah. and let it go to the bottom. And you got the chocolate syrup in there, but yeah. until you stir it up, it doesn't Third, flavor uh, the milk. It doesn't that's flavor awesome. the milk. Isn't that a great analogy? <laughs> that's a great analogy. <laughs> and I think that's what, to me, like praise and worship is that stirring up of that Amen. milk and chocolate. Yeah. Does and again, say he inhabits the praises of his people. Is that I'm like is exactly, right? exactly. And he, God inhabits the praises of his people. Perfect. Right. And then he also says, right. Uh, the fruit of our lips is praise. Offer a sacrifice of praise to God. And I tell people again, sacrifice of praise. Why? Because very subtly, we don't realize this, but we have a lot of focus on ourselves. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I realize this, as I, the more time I spend in front of the Eucharist, I'm like, I, one of the sins I always confess as a priest, I'm like, Lord, if I ever live for myself, I'm sorry, because I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for That's you. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I think so many times we unconsciously have a lot of focus on self, but worship and praise is not on self. It's on God, like glory to you, Lord, praise to you. Amen. And I've had a numerous, um, I've had people that were, Protestant that came into the church that actually said through praise and worship in front of the Eucharist, they realized that it was different with the Eucharist than without the Eucharist. Because awesome. like, you know, in their in their in their non-Catholic church, they would have praise and worship, just like many right. non-Catholics yeah. praise. But when they when the Lord was on the altar, they realized, wow, something's very different yeah. about this yeah. praise and worship. Absolutely. There's no, if you know the Lord and you're in his presence, you just know mm. it. Whether you, whether yeah. you know you know it, you know it. And uh, I kind of got a question too. <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning. Uh, As I'm driving to work, yeah. it's about a 30 minute drive and I, I leave the house a little after four in the morning. So I'm a little tired and I like to pray mm. on my way to work. But so often I find I'm mm. in the middle of praying to the Lord. And then on my mind totally wanders is something that has nothing to do with the Lord. How do we stay focused? Yeah. You know, so many, you know, and I'm not like technically diagnosed ADHD, but I, I sure. kind of scattered, you know, kind of a scattered, unorganized yeah. guy. So yeah. what would you recommend for me or people like me that we tra- we want to pray and we're praying mm-hmm. and we're excited? And the next thing you know, you're like, wow, I'm sorry. And I gotta apologize. That, Lord, I'm sorry. I was just talking to you. How rude am I? I'm, you know, I'm talking to you. Next thing I know, yeah. I'm something totally different. How do you stay focused in a prayer? Yeah, I'd say um, I would say a couple of things is uh, number one is um, be where you are because we can only give to God where we are, right? Like be where you are. Like try, don't try to be somewhere you're, you're unable to be because take me from where I'm at to where he wants me to be, right? So like, like heaven, for example. God's the only one that's going to bring me from earth to heaven. I'm not going to bring me from earth to heaven. The more I cooperate with him, the more I move from earth to heaven, right? The more I reject God, the more I move from earth to hell in a, in a sense, right? Like we, we, we begin living heaven now or hell now. We begin every day. Like we, we step into the glory, to the anointing, to the presence of the Lord. So my, 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 my point of that saying, be where you are, is so many people, I think when they go to prayer, rather than offering a sacrifice of praise. So your, your distraction is a part of your prayer. So like, Lord, I give you my distractions. Praise you for letting me offer you distractions. Lord, for all those that are suffering from distraction, as I am right now, I pray this worship for them. I adore you through. So you see, you're turning your distraction into an opportunity to praise God and an invitation to God to come into not just you and your distraction, but others as well. So you're actually using it as a stepping stone, not a stumbling block, right? Your, your, your distraction becomes a stepping stone into worship, whereas a stumbling block would be, man, like you said, kind of like, Lord, sorry about that. I can't you know rather than going into what's wrong with me, go into thank you, Jesus, for I offer you a sacrifice of praise. I offer you, I give you thanks for this. Lord, there's a lot of people distracted right now that don't have any prayer life. I just thank you for letting me offer this distraction to you right now for them. You see what I mean? So use all things. So, for God. so, so, yes. So use it, use it all, all of it, use it, whatever it is, you know, like I said, a headache, uh, a trap 
traffic jam. Lord, for all those jammed up in the spirit of life, I to this traffic jam now. You know, after you traffic jam, I, I, all the impatience I'm suffering right now, Lord, I, I just want to ring this guy in front of me who can't drive it. I want to ring his neck. He just can't drive. Like, Lord, I want to, I want to offer you up my impatience that don't know you. See what I mean? Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Turn it in. Like, that's what, see, but faith, what I'm sharing there is faith illuminates the mind to connect the dots between my distraction and my offering. I can offer my distractions. I don't have to let them become a burden. I can offer them in praise to God. Amen. Um, it's like, it's kind of like you bring bread and wine and he takes it and makes it his body and blood. Well, my bread and wine is my distraction at that moment. I'm going to offer it on the altar of praise. I'm going to lay it down on the altar. Um, mm. And the Lord's going to use it. And in somewhere, in one day when we, yeah, yeah, one day when we die, he'll be like, remember that distraction you offered up? You saved five people that day because you gave me your distraction. You see what I mean? So Christ, Christ in us, and I, I want to make this clear to people because not everybody understands this, but I don't merit grace, but Christ in me merits grace by taking on the suffering that I have. So if I have a headache and I offer it to God, Jesus through me, through you, or his body, so through baptism, or his body. So Jesus takes my headache and he offers it to the glory of God the Father for the salvation of souls. Jesus takes the cross of my headache and that's what the mass is, right? The mass is we're joining our life to Christ and he's joining us to himself to the Father, through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, and we, we, we go to heaven because we let Christ in us, like Paul says, it's no longer I who live, it's Christ in me, Christ through me, but see, this is what mystics are, mystic, the mystical life is letting Jesus live his life, through. Jesus walked through my feet today, Jesus used my hands to serve, Jesus used my eyes, Lord, what do you see right now, what are you hearing right now, Lord, what do you want to say right now? Lord, what do you want to think? Put on the mind of Christ. This is the armor of God. This is Acts of the Apostles. This is the culture of Pentecost, which we, again, in a blaze, we, we really celebrate and want to encourage um, for, the, for the glory. Yeah. Hey, and I, I got one more question, and then we're going to uh, yeah. wrap this up. I, right before I got on, because um, for my viewers, and this is recorded, but... Uh, I forgot to tell Father Mike I'm on Eastern Standard Time. I'm in Florida, yeah. in Nebraska. So I got a little late start. So as I'm waiting, I'm just looking at some of my comments. And uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I, I uh, promote uh, realestateforlife.org. It's a pro-life real estate mm -hmm. company. And mm -hmm. um, so I always get comments about that. It's usually positive. But today, the woman was just being honest. She's like, how, how, how could you ban abortion? She said, you would... You know, you're going to punish women and put them in jail and take them away from their husbands and their children. How do you plan to do that? So, I mean, she was being honest. She wasn't being rude or nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just wondering how you would answer her. <laughs> so, yeah, how would you answer someone like that? I mean, well, I, I was first of all is. Um, if we don't see life as a gift, we got to start there. Like life is not a burden it's a gift because god is life and god gives us life so i always say once life is present there's only one choice that we can make and that's to take care and nurture and provide what that life needs to flourish and grow and become the amazing man or woman that that little child's going to become right so i always say to people like we need to pray for women maybe that start out with the wrong and men that think the way that life is a, not a gift um because that's that's just, that's that's not a i would say a healthy way to think about because that's if i don't see others life as a gift most likely i don't see my life as a gift Amen. so wow so you see there's a you right. can't disconnect if, if i don't see others as gift i definitely can't see myself as a gift right that's, so there because because that's how god sees it right is like you can't say like well that person's a gift that person's not that person is that person's not you see now i'm starting to determine someone's value and dignity based on what i think 
Mm. rather than on the reality, the objective reality that every human life from conception, natural death is a gift, is good, is sacred, has a mission, has a plan and a purpose. And actually, let's be honest, babies teach us how to love. Wow. Children, children teach you how to love. And if I reject God's lessons of love that he gives us through the little ones, how can I go to heaven? Um, I have to learn to love to graduate to heaven. And I would just say the, the problem there is our, our lenses we're looking through are, are blurred. Um, mm. That we, we pray that all women will see that life and men, obviously, men and women will see that life is a gift mm. um, from the beginning to the end. And it goes back to, again, how can I, how can I, declare that this life isn't this life is who 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 again it's back to playing god i mean we might not like hearing that because we we all do it at times right is i i need to acknowledge like yeah you know i value this person i don't value that person i love this person i don't you know like lord i'm a sinner please help me and and i like to say too you know is uh um the cross is a part of love and our world wants to get through life without the cross. Well, that's unrealistic, right? Mm -hmm. Parenting, um, having a baby, um, taking care of that child, there's going to be a lot of crosses. But remember, the cross is your bridge to heaven. If you burn the bridge, you have no way to go to heaven. Wow. I don't know if you've ever saw that. There's a cool comic out there. You can look it up, cross, cutting your cross or something like that. This little uh, guy... His cross is real heavy. So he keeps cutting pieces of it off. And then he gets to this chasm where he has to cross over. And he realized that he cut so much of his cross off that it won't fit across there. Yeah, I've never seen that. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool comic, but it's really not a comic. It's true. Right. It's true. It's <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, uh, I just would say um, you need sometimes to be told what you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent, as a coach, as a teacher, as a priest, um, for that matter, everyone needs people in their life that's going to tell them things they don't want to hear. And uh, if we don't have those people, if we don't have laws to protect us from others taking our lives, really what ends up happening then is, is chaos and confusion is was what you're seeing today in the world is um, you know, I always say the modern day Calvary is the abortion mills that are around the world, you know, or these unborn children, the most innocent and vulnerable are being literally slaughtered, ripped apart. And, and supposedly the safest place was supposed to be the womb. And why is it that a woman would want to eliminate the gift God's given her? Um, because again, once life exists, there's no other choice. I mean, even if I don't feel like taking care of that child, love demands it. Man. Um, and I always say, love demands from me and you, from all of us, all those watching, love demands things of us that we don't like a lot of times, but we, we either obey love or we don't obey love. There's, there's really no you know, gray there. It's love requires sacrifice and commitment. And I would like to invite people to consider when you love and you invest in that baby that you might be tempted to abort, you're actually going to grow in life, love, and holiness. And I know a lot of women who will tell you, I was going to abort my child and I didn't. And now I'm so glad I didn't. That, that child's the love of my life. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything, I can't, they, they almost, they're almost dumbfounded that they were once going to take the life of that baby. They're like, wow. This baby's become my greatest joy and blessing. And the whole point of masculinity and femininity is to give ourselves, not to take someone's life, but to give life. Wow. Um, That's awesome. That was you know, and it's very, it's very, it's very Eucharistic, right? This is my body given. Mm. This is my body given up for you. Um, and I, you know, my brother has two little girls. My, my other brother has a little boy. They're both like one and two years old. And I'll tell you, they're so refreshing for me. So joyful, so amazing. 
I, I have actually like, it breaks my heart to think that children are abused or neglected in any way. I just, I can't fathom like how innocent and how, how, how beautiful the heart of children are that the, the enemy, Satan hates children. Why? Because Jesus says, unless you become like children, you can't enter the kingdom. Yeah. So if you have the mind of the enemy, what makes sense is get rid of all the little ones, get rid of the children. Why? Because Satan knows, the Antichrist knows that Jesus is going to become flesh through that little baby's flesh again. So every unborn child is actually a reminder to Satan that he lost. Wow. Think about that. Wow. Every pregnant woman reminds Satan of Mary pregnant with Jesus. Wow. Every baby born reminds Satan that another little Jesus is coming into the world. And I got to get rid of these little Jesus. I can't have Jesus running all over because little children by default are most Jesus like we don't even have to train them. You know, sadly, our world screws us up and we have to get back to the truth of the child's heart. But um, there's a spiritual battle there. Like, you know, Satan knows that little children are the key to reminding us of who we are in God's eyes. Um, and I don't know about you, when, when you're with little kids, see this thing here? This time stops when I'm with little kids because I don't think about it anymore. You know why? Because I'm absorbed in the present moment. You know why? Because little kids know what love is. Little kids are absorbed in the moment. And Satan hates children. He hates the present moment. He hates God. He hates you and I. And he hates women. He wants women to destroy life rather than the, to nurture it. He wants men to destroy life rather than protect it. It's just the truth. I mean, it's on, we don't like always hearing that, but like there's part of, there's parts of you and I that haven't yet been converted over. We need a conversion. I need greater conversion every day. Wow. And what we need to do is in, invite these women to consider like, wow, you know, God's given you this amazing gift of life. Um, why would you not want to uh, uh, embrace that gift and become who you are as a woman, um, not who you aren't? You aren't designed to destroy. You're designed to, to, to build up. Nourish. Um, I have a friend. Uh, he's actually a part of our ministry team here. He's, his name's Pat Castle. He's, he's in charge of life runners you know, for the whole world. Um, if you ever wanted to do an interview with him, he's a great guy. And he yeah, maybe text me his he, number. Maybe we can get. Yeah, he does a lot. He, he's actually very involved in Ablaze. And we have an encounter ministry school starting in the fall here at Ablaze. So there's a lot happening. But he's a very uh, spirit filled man of God that basically gave up his whole life to to teach and preach and proclaim life. And he's seen through Ablaze the importance of the healing dimension with women and men with abortion. There's so much need for healing um yeah yeah that's yeah definitely text me his number and maybe we can get something get something going yeah Dear father this this has been a blessing i enjoyed yeah, everything thanks. of it and i'm sure yeah. viewers put in the comments i'm sure you guys were refreshed uh what a mm. refreshing word uh mm. joy and you know sometimes we like we forget you know like we get yeah. down by the world but you know mm. jesus you know gives us yeah. life and gives us life abundantly you know, when yeah. we have our conversion, we we experience the joy mm. and and the power of the Holy Spirit, and just sometimes we just get yeah. into the world and we forget. And uh, I'm thankful for you to remind us tonight. Mm. You really uh, yeah, praise I God. I would say if if you're ever feeling like you need to plug your plug in, go to a blaze mm. worship. I'm not even joking. Yeah. just watch some of his worship where he's just playing mm. guitar and listen to some of uh, Father Mike's mm. homilies. I mean. Every home yeah. I hear, I'm like, wow, that just blew my socks off. Wow. Mm. It's the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, you know, it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm just thankful for you. So, yeah. Um, again, thanks again. I would love to do this uh, another night. You just let me know sure. when you're available. Yeah, no doubt. You know what? So um, to talk about, but uh, yeah, let me give a, a special blessing, huh? Yes, good. Um, one thing that uh, God taught me recently is don't ever forget how powerful the hands of a priest are. Because rem I would like to let everybody know, remind your priest of the power of offering a blessing as a priest. Because God, these hands were anointed by the bishop with holy oil, chrism, right, to, to, to bless people. Um, and, and I just, the Lord really told me, convicted me recently. He's like, 
he goes, I want you to bless people more, like pray blessings of people. Because when you're blessed, something's happening in the spiritual realm. Like God's doing something right now when I when you receive this blessing. Because it's not about me. It's not about, you know, I think that sometimes, like, you know, this whole idea of, you know, we worry too much about, you know, Father was ordained to serve and let Jesus bless through him. So these hands, Jesus, I've given them to Jesus so he can bless you guys and, and you can receive his power. So let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you have anointed my hands to holy orders to bless, to heal in your name, to restore life, to regenerate, rejuvenate, refresh and restore. I just pray right now for all those watching that the Holy Spirit I ask you to come into every cell, molecule, and atom of our body from head to toe. I ask you to come into our organs, our blood, come into our family trees, all our relationships with family, friends. Lord, come Holy Spirit in power. I pray, Lord, for healing. of. I touch every memory, every imagination, every thought, feeling, and desire of each person here. I pray that you assign extra angels and saints in heaven. Blessed Mother, I ask you to set up prayer teams in heaven for every person watching here with the saints. I just pray healing and blessing. And through the power of the Most Holy Trinity, may God bless you all and protect you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Father. Lord. Yeah. Thanks. God bless you guys, and I'd love to do it again. Awesome. So it stopped recording and okay, wait.